imagine the smell of beer everywhere and uh, all these faces looking at these, uh, these tattoos all on stage, people parading around with their body art. And uh, you look at the photograph and I'm the one taking it and everyone's white. I'm the only Chinese person there. <laughs> think of that situation and think of how did I get here? And that's what I'm thinking in my head as well. So, I, uh, I came out of the womb with a, uh, with a camera in my hand. <laughs> and so, uh, and it's just one of those things that just happens, you know, it's just a freak accident. And uh, I've always been an outsider, I think, in the sense that uh, I've lived in this community, I grew up here, and it's been a bit of a privilege in a sense, because I've, all, I've often had uh, a foot in one culture and then a foot in the other culture. But I don't think I appreciated my own culture enough. Um, I did use photography as a way to kind of connect into, uh, you know, friendships and, and family life. But uh, it's always been a it's, a, it's it's a strange medium because uh, I'm not sure where it all sits. So I'm not sure if I'm welcome either. But I've, I think, uh, <laughs> but I, I certainly miss, I certainly miss I don't think it's advancing. <laughs> So, uh, so this is uh, this is me in 1984 and also in 2012. Uh, so you can see my long tie here in, the, in this region. So obviously I've uh, been welcomed in the community. I've been I've built up, you know, a great uh, you know, knowledge of uh, the people here and also just the lifestyle here. And, um, is that but, the same cover up? Uh, no, no, no. So I, um, and, uh, so I went off and studied uh, television production. I was very interested in the moving image and how it could tell the story. And uh, at the same time, I also studied paintings as well. And I just loved the idea of being able to capture a story in one frame. And so I used to do a lot of uh, the still frame photography on, on a lot of our uh, productions. But I think that's really where it all kind of you know, uh, propelled me along. After uh, just high school, you know, I, I, I was um, studying it as well. So I didn't travel much in my youth. Um, I only first traveled overseas uh, when I was 18. And so the circumstances of my family were that uh, weren't, weren't beneficial to it. You know, we just didn't we just didn't get out much. We had to work a lot, and so. Uh, so when I did get out there, it was a big eye-opener and it broadened my horizons. And I just, I always wanted to be a photojournalist, uh, whenever I was, since I was young. And the problem was that I just had this creative vision, I feel, that hindered me from uh, employment. <laughs> and, so, and so any portfolios that I ever submitted just weren't of their spec. That's fine. Um, but that photograph, uh, I think uh, the last one that you saw, kind of represented my working life for the next couple of years because I didn't break out and follow my dreams. But um, so I had to make my own little projects, and as you can see, uh, it was a big jump from 2000 to 2005. I actually had a very big drought of, uh, of creativity, and so in 2005 and six, then it started coming back up where I thought, okay, maybe I could do this. So I went and put myself in the strangest places that I could find, and in that case, it was I was living in Canberra, and I had to find very strange locations like uh, the Summonets uh, Car Festival, where it didn't, uh, it wasn't necessarily my culture, but because I'm stepping into another culture, uh, it was just as good as going overseas. And so, um, and I like creating layers in my photography, so. That they're not, just not uh, just not flat because photography is a very flat medium, as you understand. You, you know, if you put it in a gallery, it doesn't really change the way that you read it. But you have to create that depth within the photograph and the composition. So um, when you put restrictions on yourself as well, you can find some amazing things. Like if you just photograph only at night uh, after you knock off work, you'd be interested to see what does pop up. <laughs> So, and I think a good, uh, it's always been said that uh, 
to have your camera at f8 and be there is just one thing, but I think intuition plays a big part in it as well. Uh, turning up with the camera and uh, you know, just being ready is one thing, but it's, it's having, that, having that knowledge of when something interesting is going to happen. It's just something that just doesn't come uh, easily. Um, I actually hate travel. I really do. <laughs> it's, it's a big horror of mine. It's, and so every time I go out on a mission like this, it's, it's, a, really big, uh, it's a really big ask. I get, I've, I've even diagnosed myself with what I call hoteliitis. <laughs> you know, I wake up and it's like, geez, I've like, I got to get out of this room and I just can't. And so the camera gives me an excuse to go and do that because otherwise I'll go home without any photographs. Um, yeah. So, um, a good documentary photography, which is what I, I like to, I guess, subscribe myself to, I feel is uh, something that dates well. And I feel that timelessness sucks, because anything that's just like a timeless image of a you know, blade of grass with a dewdrop coming off it, it just doesn't make sense, like, to me anyway, because that could, you could take that today, or you could take it yesterday, or you could take it 10 years in the future and still be the same. But these images are things that happen only once, and they'll never happen again. And, and you have to be there. You're living the moment, you're seeing history unfold. Um, and, and, it's, and it's a privilege to be there, in a sense, because you can only be in one place at one time. So um, I, I have to choose the moments that I do capture very specifically. And so the practice of using film and that now going to digital has kind of affected that in a sense because you're always thinking, well, who cares if I just take 10,000 photographs or something? It doesn't matter. That's, uh, it's the photographs that you don't take that you regret the most. And, and, that's, and I think this is one of those photographs. You know? um, it's about recognizing art in the everyday life and the compositions uh, from mundane situations and, and the context behind them as well. And finding the importance of um, everything that we see every day, but we just don't recognize it. Uh, who knows? Who knows? So, um, when I'm taking these photographs, I always have the struggle of between aesthetics and documenting. It's a fine balance. If I don't get it right, it's either becomes an unremarkable document, or it becomes an impression on somebody's mind when they see the image. And that's very important to find the balance between the two because it needs to excite people, but at the same time, it needs to record something. Otherwise, it's useless. Um, I don't just want to create art. I want to create things that could also sit in a, a, uh, in a museum as well. You know, it serves a dual purpose there. Um, so, technical considerations of the. Ah, the hell with it. <laughs> so, um, I think, if anything, this, uh, the show that I've had on at the gallery is a great representation of the photographs that I've seen in my youth. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing what comes up next in my lifetime. Yeah.